Hi, today I'm going to show you how to turn your Raspberry Pi into a web server. The first thing you'll need to do, of course, is install a new installation of Raspberry Pi on your SD card. If you don't already know how to do this, then please visit the channel www.youtube.com forward slash teach yourself stuff and you will find the video here, uh, Raspberry Pi basic installation and setup of Wheezy. So what you'll need to do is run through all that and then when you get to this screen here you will need to follow the instructions. Uh, first of all expand the rootfs so it fills the entire SD card but the most important one is to make sure that SS H is enabled. I tell you to do this in the instructions, but in case you didn't do that, um, you'll need to go back, reinstall your card, uh, enable SSH, and uh, once that's done, you can carry on with the rest of this tutorial. Now, once you've done that, um, your Raspberry Pi has been rebooted and the partition has been um, reset or resized, I should say. And you're sitting there at the command prompt asking for Pi and your password. At this point, you can basically unplug your mouse and keyboard and just leave your Raspberry Pi running in the corner. Everything else will be done via SSH. And to do this, you'll need to grab an SSH, SSH client. So go to www. Sorry, my, blind, my mind's completely blank then. SS, sorry, www.putty.org and download the putty client. Now I've already got that um, pinned to my taskbar so I'm just going to launch that. Um, you'll get an IP address for your Raspberry Pi. Um, this is readable directly from your login screen so if you just look at your login screen um, on your main Raspberry Pi itself uh, you'll see the information there. As you can see, so uh, my IP address is 192.168.0 and 7. So it's directly right above your uh, your login screen there. So I can get rid of that now. I'm going to completely operate within um, the SSH client, which is putty. Uh, so it's 192.168.0.7 and I click on open. And this is basically a remote terminal window. So I log in with my usual details, Pi and Raspberry. And in order to ensure our Raspberry Pi is as stable and up to date as possible, the first thing we could do is run a set of commands that updates the firmware and software side of things. And to do this, uh, first of all, we're going to update the clock. Um, so sudo uh, dpkg hyphen reconfigure tz data and this will come up so select the area you're in I'm in Europe and the closest city to me is London and that basically automatically sets the time and uh, details on my Raspberry Pi. Next, we're going to update our repository information, and we're going to do that with sudo apt get update. And we'll just wait for all that to download. I'll just pause the video while it installs everything. So once all that's uh, finished and you're back at your command prompt, you then want to perform a, a nice update of all the packages and things on your system. So to do that, we're going to type in sudo apt get and upgrade. So don't worry if your um, your um, putty client pauses while you're typing in things just carry on typing and it will catch up eventually so I'll then hit enter there now this process can take about 20 to 30 minutes depending on your um, download speed so if you type yes here and then enter and then you can just walk away go make a cup of tea or do whatever you like so I'm going to pause the recording here as well and I shall come back when it's finished updating everything So now that that's finished updating, we're going to uh, proceed and update our firmware. And we're going to do this with sudo apt-get. <coughs> and we're going to say install CA certificates. And 
this will download so everything is already at the latest version that's good and now we're going to update the git course so sudo apt get install git core and yes and again I'll pause the recording there and uh, return when it's finished installing everything now we're going to uh, grab the um, RPI update made by um, hex and we're going to type in sudo wget um, http colon double forward slash and g double o full stop um, gl uh, forward slash 1 B capital O and F capital J space minus O space uh, forward slash USR uh, forward slash bin forward slash RPI hyphen update and then two at signs space and sudo ch mod add x space forward slash usr forward slash oh, sorry that should be usr not e uh forward slash bin forward slash r p i update hyphen update i should say and this basically makes it this basically downloads it from that location um to that folder structure and then we set it to executable and we'll wait for that to download it won't take too long so there we go that's now been done and now we type in sudo wait for it to catch up uh, sudo rpi hyphen update and this will now um, update all the firmware so as I say this will take a few minutes so again I'll pause the recording there and come back when it's finished Okay, that's been done. Now, as you can see, it's all the message there telling us that we need to reboot. And to do this, type in sudo <coughs> uh, sudo shutdown hyphen r and now. And if I look at my Raspberry Pi device, yep, there we go. So it's now rebooting. So what I'm going to do is close this. I uh, will launch the uh, putty again. Type in the address 192.168.0.7, and I'm going to wait a couple of minutes for the Raspberry Pi to finish rebooting. Okay, that should be enough time. So I'm going to click on Open here, and I'll log in with my usual details. So that's Pi and raspberry and this will take us back to our command prompt and that's everything updated now so we're going to get onto the flesh of our tutorial and install uh, the two pieces of software that's going to enable us to uh, run websites like uh, MediaWiki, Joomla, that kind of thing so sudo apt-get and install Apache 2 space PHP 5 and LIB Apache 2 hyphen mod hyphen PHP 5 and we'll hit enter there and it will ask us if we want to install everything in a moment yes we do and we'll just let it get on with the uh, installation again I'll pause the recording there and come back once it's finished okay that's now been installed and we've actually got a working web server now so if i just resize this a bit and go to my uh, my other window and type in 192.168.0.7 
and as you can see it now works so uh, if uh, your entire attention is to just serve html contact or php content then uh, you can do so now you don't actually need to do anything further however if you wish to install mysql database support then uh, carry on with this tutorial and to do that we're going to type in sudo apt get and install my sql hyphen server my sql hyphen client and php5 hyphen my sql and again we should have asked yes so we press yes there and again i'm going to wait for that to install and then come back so partway through the install, it then asks us for a root user password, and we're going to type in our password, and type it in again, and it will then carry on with the installation. And now everything has been installed. Now, in other instructions I've read, they often go on to install an FTP server. However, this is wholly unnecessary. If I go to, um, here we go. If I go to, uh, I've forgotten the name bit, FileZilla. <laughs> uh, my brain's gone blank. So FileZilla, then um, I'll have a look here. So as you can see, I've created an account already. I've got my Raspberry Pi um, address here. I've got my login set to normal, um, and I've just typed in my usual Pi and password. And if I click on connect here, so I bought the previous one and reinstall. As you can see, I, I now have full FTP, well, SFTP access to my um, directory structure and my web server is located at I believe is var and www so there we go so there we go we've got the index file we've been seeing there so all you need to do is upload um, any HTML files or any other um, tar files or whatever you want to install to your www directory and it will be addressed um, by the server so uh, so as you can see, uh, we've already got the it works here page, and we can change this very easily. So what I'm going to do now is delete this file, and then copy over the new index. And then if I find my web browser, And as you can see, the old page is there, so I'm just going to press F5 and refresh. I then get the right file. <laughs> So there we go, we've now got a working web server and you can install media wikis or whatever local websites you want for your LAN. I don't recommend using it as an actual web server to going out onto the internet, um, but for sort of internal development and keeping wikis and that kind of thing, which is what I intend to do it for, then it's an ideal little box to do that with.